Hello, everyone, and welcome to a Channel 781 special report. School starts August 29th, and as of now, Waltham does not have a superintendent. You may recall in March of this year, we learned Dr. Reagan would be leaving for a new job in Hudson. The city posted a job for an interim superintendent for a term of two years, which is expected to include the transition to the new high school. At their July 19th meeting, the school committee interviewed five candidates, and they had planned to make a decision in that meeting. However, after voting 32 times, they did not have a majority for any candidate. They continued the discussion at a special meeting on the 27th, and after 30 more votes, they again were unable to reach a majority. So I am here with Jamie Krikelis. Hello, Jamie. Hi, everyone. And Jamie is going to uh, walk us through what happened at these meetings and also give us some background. Um, so I'll turn it over to you first. I want to also acknowledge Kara Mahoney, um, who you may remember from our special report about sober houses. She is now part of our team and helped with the research um, for this report. So Jamie, can you tell us a little bit more about what happened? And as a bit of a background, the uh... Waltham Public School has not been able to maintain a, a superintendent for a full four-year term for the last five years. Uh, Waltham Public Schools was planning to open the new high school, which is the most expensive in the state, under construction with a uh, integrated vocational school uh, for the fall 2024 semester. The location of the dual language school, which is currently on uh, Moody Street, is still up in the air and there's talk of expanding this program to more grade levels as well. So basically the situation was that the uh, school committee met last week on uh, uh, July 19th uh, to interview and elect or select from five uh, final candidates for interim school superintendent. Uh, they were not able to come to an agreement after 32 votes were cast and the chair of the school committee, the mayor, abstain from voting as she felt it was not appropriate for her to weigh in on this matter. That is a tie. As I said earlier, I do not believe that the mayor or any mayor of the city of Waltham should determine the superintendent of schools. I believe that's the, the responsibility of the Waltham School Committee. A mayor can only vote to make or break a tie. And based upon that the sever severity of this, I do not b believe that I should do that. I, I don't have a problem voting, but I don't believe I should do it because it's the responsibility of the school committee. So I will say that's a tie. Three, Carter, three left. Okay, ballot 35. The uh, meeting was adjourned and the committee met again on uh, July 27th to attempt to come to some sort of agreement. Uh, so out of the candidates that were up, it was uh, Dr. James Chemo Carter, Timothy Luff, Paul Mayorino, Cynthia Paris, and uh, Dr. Janelle Pearson Campbell. And the final result was a 3-3 tie over the course of 62 ballots. Uh, the mayor also suggested using the current interim superintendent or uh, assistant superintendent for finance as and, and uh, operations, uh, Leanne uh, uh, Wilczynski in the position because uh, she had been appointed for her current position by the uh, committee was the rationale, therefore they should appoint her for the superintendent role. That also did not happen. Uh, the next meeting for this is gonna be August 9th, and the that is gonna be closely followed up by the next school semester starting August 29th. Councillor Paz put out, who's running for mayor, put out a statement where he, uh, you know, said that this was an, um, you know, a bad situation for our city. He also said in that that Mayor McCarthy had dispatched Dr. Reagan, Dr. Reagan, excuse me. Um, and so, uh, in trying to evaluate if that's true, um, we don't have a ton of information to go on. A lot happened behind closed doors. Um, but we do know that at the time that he uh, 
let people know he was leaving, he didn't have a contract. Um, his union, which is the administrator's union, was still in negotiations with the school committee. All right, we don't know for sure what um, Mayor McCarthy's role was in his leaving, but we see from these clips that she is a very powerful presence on this um, committee. And I guess I'm trying to lead into your information you have about our past uh, superintendents, because I think that's pretty interesting too in trying to evaluate uh, what's going on here. Oh yeah, let me uh, share my screen here. Um, there we go. So essentially this is a plot of the, and, and I'm gonna start with the list of the superintendents, and, but we'll put up a list of the previous superintendents and then the, this was then taken and put into a distribution where uh, you can see in the red highlighted the uh, X axis is just years and the Y axis is just turn increments of terms. So there were uh, two superintendents previously with 10 year terms, neither of which was originally started under uh, Mayor McCarthy. So, and the average of superintendent terms prior to Mayor McCarthy's tenure was at around 11 years. Under Mayor McCarthy, it is 2.5 years by this sort of reckoning. So, and the period, the, the red section covers in a period of time three times as long. So, this is just in the last like 15, 20 years is the blue section. Interesting. Gone, That's very this, interesting. This many, this many superintendents. So that's a correlation. It doesn't prove that she is the cause, but it certainly suggests that she could uh, be the cause or um, something that she's doing is the cause. It, the, yeah, there's there could be a lot of different factors at play here, like structural and otherwise. But at the same time, I'm, there are other other school systems have been able to hold on to superintendents during this time period. So I don't think that there's like some sort of overdetermined thing making it that superintendents are going to be inclined to be leaving necessarily but I mean there could be things like you know difficulty working with the mayor as one of those factors I could see increasing that but because one of the roles of superintendent is going is working with the school committee which is chaired by the mayor so and that is a part that is by ordinance the the um, mayor is automatically the chair of the school committee. Um, so looking at, at this, so there's a lot of talk about this on social media. Um, there were some people who seemed to kind of be blaming the committee um, uh, collectively. And I'm talking now about the votes, these sort of like bizarre. I mean, these clips are kind of bizarre. Mrs. Coleman. Mr. Love. Ms. Darling. Dr. Carter. Mr. Fresco. Dr. Carter. Mrs. Aldemar. Mr. Luff. Mrs. Gaitlin. Dr. Carter. Mr. Torello. Mr. Luff. That's still three to three. Mr. Torello. Mr. Luff. Mrs. Gaitley. Dr. Carter. Mrs. Aldemar. Mr. Luff. Mr. Fresco. Dr. Carter. Ms. Donnelly. Dr. Carter. Mrs. Coleman. Mr. Love. Then we go. Ms. Coleman. Mr. Love. Ms. Donnelly. Dr. Carter. Mr. Fresco. Dr. Carter. Mrs. Aljamal. Mr. Love. Ms. Gately. Dr. Carter. Mr. Torello. Mr. Love. Okay. They're taking the same vote over and over again with no uh, discussion in between most of them. And it's really not clear how it's supposed to end. And so some people are kind of blaming the committee uh, collectively for that, saying they can't make a decision, they can't make up their minds. But as individuals, they had made up their minds. Um, and it seemed to me that the mayor was in control of the situation because she's the seventh vote. Um, it's very clear in our ordinance that she can vote. And she had decided, she said it was improper for the mayor to pick the superintendent, which maybe there's something to that. But 
Uh, that is what our ordinance says. And as far as I know, she hasn't ever tried to change that ordinance. And is this kind of uh, result, this kind of outcome where there's this um, very kind of embarrassing and frustrating long ritual of voting that doesn't go anywhere, is that somehow less improper than the mayor voting? So it maybe I'm seeing it too black and white, but it seems to me this is on the mayor. It was she had the right and the responsibility to vote. And um, I don't understand why she didn't. It seemed to me, and you can tell me if you agree, it seemed to me it was kind of like um, when kids are arguing, an adult will tell them, stop arguing. They don't want a referee who's right and wrong and resolve the conflict. They want him to stop. And they might say, if you don't stop, you're all going to be punished. And it felt to me like she was trying to put a lot of pressure on the six members to come to a decision. Um, and But if you look at it on an individual basis, the only way that could happen was for someone to change their vote. It's complicated because early on, Mr. Tarallo was voting for other things, nominating other people. But um, the as it went on, he became the third vote for Mr. Luff. And so the only way out of it was for someone to change their vote. And I'm not sure if you look at it on an individual le level, that would have been the right thing to do because your job there is to vote for who you think is best for the system. And... Also, if you just change your vote because of the awkwardness of this long ritual going on, you're kind of letting down all the other people who wanted that candidate, and you're kind of making the previous hours you spent going through this process seem useless. So I don't think it would have been right for someone to change their vote. It seemed to me the person who controlled the situation here was Mayor McCarthy. Um, was that your impression too? Yeah, so you're... Like, I feel like you're correct in pointing out that like, the mayor is like chairing this thing. So she's sort of like facilitating the meeting and tries to position it that she's just like the neutral arbitrator who doesn't make rulings. But like, then you've got no way to have a tiebreaker. So then you just have a situation like this where no such nothing gets advanced. There, there's no way to come to any kind of a decision because everything has to be mediated through a public meeting and things like that too which makes this the awkward and i feel like that there's also some amount of uh, difficulty with lining up scheduling and stuff because you've got to get the applicants applying they've got to have it work out with their scheduling and all this it's like a whole orchestration and that's i think partly why there is like this pressure to make a decision but at the same time like if there's if you're going to have to come to some decision regardless then why the, the kind of raise the question why is the process structured like this like if it's all predetermined that there's going to have to be someone who's coming out of this then like i mean yeah uh, and the end result it, is also that we we don't give an answer to those candidates they're yeah. still sort of in limbo and there is uh is there is currently an acting superintendent is that right yeah, and th that was, I think, who the um, mayor had opted to sort of say, why don't we just make them the, the current interim superintendent? I think oh, was, she said that. I didn't realize she said that. Yeah. But that yeah, suggests probably, we, maybe a motivation that, that maybe that was the outcome she wanted was to keep that interim person. That, that was like what she was doing when she was like trying to be like the adult in the room saying you have to come to some decision. Here's the person you all voted for as in their current role. You unanimously voted for them in their current role. Why don't you unanimously vote for them in this role? I'm going to speak to the school committee. Mayor McCarthy. With all due respect to everyone here, you need to have four votes to do anything in the school system. I don't feel that we are achieving anything. I don't think that we are able to get to four. I believe that the only option before us is either to put one of your assistant superintendents that may get four votes into the job. You have one right now that received six votes. Six votes. So I'm not, I, I believe that she is willing to 
serve until she can. She's not going to abandon a school system that has been most of her career spent here. The rest of it was spent in the city in various positions. So the only person that has received any votes of a, plur of a majority has been the assistant superintendent for administration and finance. And that's the fact. Other than that, all of the other candidates only get three votes. And in some occasion, last time, it was two, two, and two. So that went up and down. So I think it's important that you either decide to appoint somebody acting again with, you know, like you did, the acting position is going to be there for August 9th. August, August 15th, I said, you, I believe Mrs. Kern, you said it would be 40, 45 days. 15th is when her contract expires. Yes. Okay. So now we have other things to do with regard to executive session matters, which that's also on the 9th. So I believe that this school committee needs to unite with one person. And I believe you've already done that. So I respectfully ask you to go forward with that and then you will have an opportunity to decide if you want a two year, a five year, a six year. But I will say to this, I, am, I don't believe that there is anyone present that will have four votes after having 60, 63, I think it was at. Plus, it, it you know, got interrupted. We st Six, seven, yeah. It, we took a break at ballot 62. Okay? So there were 62 ballots, and now we're here. So that's the only thing, that's the only advice that I can give to this committee because you need four votes for someone that will provide the stability, and she has for many, many years. She has the, she has the help of uh, Dr. Sarah. Okay, so that's what my recommendation is to you because even though I'll go back and I'll take votes until 12 o'clock tonight, it doesn't appear to be changing the results. And I'm not, I could express my opinion about candidates, but I won't. The only thing I can say is you unanimously voted the acting superintendent. And that superintendent is extremely, acting superintendent is extremely dedicated, qualified, and loves the school district. And I, I very much appreciate the fact that she was willing to step to the plate to assist us. And she's not gonna abandon the school system. She has a lot on her plate, but she's asking for the assistance of the other people in the school system, and she's been doing that. So, and they have been working together. And I believe she does have the ability to lead this district into the next phase. Yes. So that, that's the only thing, and I take the chair back now. I don't know what else to tell you because I can't see. I've never seen this in my career. I've seen a lot of votes, but usually there's a movement somewhere. From, from, a, from a standpoint and of, of uh, educational uh, ideology and, um, <coughs> and your opinions, I respect all those, but that doesn't get us anywhere further in this process. So that's my recommendation. Interesting. And my under, I, I, my understanding is the person who is the acting superintendent is an administrator who is well respected, but she's not doesn't have a teacher background. She's not the kind of person you would usually have as a permanent superintendent. There, there had been previously like other interim superintendents under the current mayor. There'd been other interim superintendents before the mayor too, but there's just been a lot more under her. And I feel like that does like you you do want to have someone who's like 
not just like in in like a secretarial or like an administrative role coming up through the like has, has some background then i feel like but that's if the person is already doing the job i can see why she's just saying why don't you just use this person who's already there but they may just be in that position because they've already because they're you know because the mayor already knows that she can work with them so that might be yeah if that's somebody she knows and she feels comfortable working with and and this is going into the the transition to the new high school which is a big deal for her legacy it's something Mm. that a lot of people in town will be paying attention to um even people who don't have kids in high school are interested in what's going on with that so maybe that she wants to work with somebody familiar to her um so as far as we know that person will be the superintendent when school starts unless something else happens do we have any more insight into what the next step could be here uh, <clears throat> the next meeting is august 9th so they may come up ah, i got it yes the august 9th meeting so we'll we'll be watching that and we'll see what happens um there were some people on social media talking about this in relation to the upcoming election um people were frustrated and saying maybe some of the incumbents should be voted out. So just so people know how this uh, ties into the election, um, there are three seats that are on the ballot. Uh, Mrs. Gately is not uh, running again, but Mr. Tarallo and Mr. Frasica, yeah, Mr. Tarallo and Mr. Frasica are running for re-election. So there's one opening and there's three challengers, uh, Tammy Bigelow, Carolina Lara and James Zangi. So we will have at least one new person on the school committee. We could have as many as three. And then the mayor is automatically on the school committee. Um, so generally speaking, if the voters want to change out the majority, they usually can't do that in one election cycle, but they could if they were to uh, elect a new mayor. So we'll see what happens. So there could be anywhere from zero to four new members, uh, so from one to four new members on the school committee um, after this year. So uh, thank you very much, James, for the research. Thank you, Kara, for the research. We are going to watch that meeting on August 8th, and we will try to have more info for you on what's going on here and what the background is on that. Thank you for watching. Bye, everyone.